Hello again, this is Zachary Lewis with the Game Studio. Another exciting episode of Making Games with Flashpunk. Today we're going to be talking about taking the Ogmo level that we made last time and importing it in. So we're basically writing an XML importer for our tiles, which is pretty sweet. Just to refresh your memory, we made this awesome bitchin' level where we got the player start and then some grass and whatnot. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set up our level. Uh, to be able to take in XML data. So I've already got our level set up and in our levels constructor we'll set a new XML that takes in a class we'll say. So this can be whatever XML we decide to pass in. Now I'm setting up a class because we're going to use the raw embed data which is saved out as a class. So in our game world, you'll notice that we create a new level right here. Well, let's go ahead and embed that test level we created. There's our test level. And let me see here. All right, so we're gonna have to do this by hand manually, which isn't really a problem. Basically what we're gonna do so we're going to say embed source equals and we know that it's test level dot OEL Ogmo editor level and for XML data you want to set the MIME type that's going to be application slash octet stream and close that parenthesis close that bracket now this is going to be private static constant and we'll call this a uh, default map and it'll be a class and now you can see why we wanted to set it up in our test level to be a class so now when we create this level, we're just going to pass in default map. Easy peasy. Close that parenthesis so we don't break things. All right, so now back in our level. The first thing we're going to want to do, we're just going to go ahead and get rid of this old tile code. And we'll go ahead and get rid of this old grid code. Because we're going to be bringing all that back in. So after we create our tile set and create our grid, we'll go ahead and call a function called load level. And we'll just go ahead and pass that XML on through. Now we'll create that function that I was just talking about. Load level. All right, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get our XML set up because right now it's a class, it's binary data. So what we want to do is create a new byte array. So we're going to call this a uh, raw data byte array. That's going to equal a new XML. That's our class that we imported. All right? So now, uh, and we'll call this data string. It's going to be a string. And so basically what we're going to do is take our binary data and read it out into a string. So that'll be raw data dot read UTF bytes. And you know, this isn't something that I've I've memorized. This is kind of confusing. Uh, so you know, once you use it a couple times then you can always go back and look at your old uh, code raw data dot uh, length. That's going to tell it what to read in. Now a cool thing about ActionScript 3 is that XML is one of the pretty native uh, functionalities. Um, so we can actually just set our XML data as an XML. And we can just say that that equals a new XML and just pass in our string. 
So there you go. Right now our XML data has been loaded into our level. Now we can give this a test. We'll go ahead and trace out our XML data. We'll see what happens. Let's hope it doesn't break. All right. Obviously no level because we've not imported that yet. But ho ho, what is this? If you look at our output, oh, it's sneaky. Sneaky output. If you look at our output, you can see it spit out all that XML, that beautiful, beautiful XML data. So that's awesome. So now we can take this and start to import it. Now, Flash uses what's called E4X for the XML reading and writing and arithmetic and what, whatnot. And so it's actually really easy to uh, read from XML. So we're going to go ahead and start um, by just loading in our tiles. That seems easy enough, right? So what we're going to want, we already know what our graphics and grids and whatnot are. So let's create a couple variables here. Our data list. This is going to be an XML list that we're going to be bringing in from. And we'll create a data element. And that'll just be an, an XML. So the way that this works is that we can subclass things. We've got our test level open right here, so we can set that over here and we can kind of view it as we go. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is create a little loop, a little iterator for each uh, data element. That's wrong. The first thing we want to do is create a data list, right? So we already have our data list set up. So we'll say data list equals um, yes, uh, sorry, it's spaced out there for a second. Data list equals our XML data dot. Then we can look our tiles dot tile. So we can basically just pass in our tiles. And we'll go on and say dot tile. So that's going to get all the tile tags in the sub tag our tile. Our, our, our tiles. So that's that's gonna set us up. So now we can iterate for that through through that for each uh, data element. Each one is an individual XML in our data list. Alright, so now we can actually start creating our data. So what we're going to want to do is in our tiles, we're going to say tiles.add, I believe. Nope. Set tile. All right. So now we have our data element. Now it's asking for the column and row, but by number, not by x and y value. So uh, you can see over here we have the X and Y location of each tile. So we'll go with data element dot and then to get the attribute you hit the at symbol and then X. Now we also want to cast that into an integer because that's what it is. It, XML treats everything like strings. And then we want to divide that by our tile width. And same with the height. So our row is going to be an integer of data element dot at y and we'll divide that by 32 and finally our index you remember that 0 was uh, our stone and 1 was our grass well Ogmo saves those in as the x and y locations of that texture so uh, for our simple case it's not too tough we just say again int Data element, see if we can spell that right, dot at tx, since it's one long thing, we don't have to worry about checking the y location. We'll divide that by 32 as well. And that should give us, I'll go ahead and close this because it's just 
getting all up in my view. All right. So that should set the tiles for all of our data. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's hope that we don't get any errors. We succeeded. Bam. As you can see, we now have all of our tiles loaded in properly. And just to confirm, yep, there's our map, and there's that map. Pretty cool, huh? But we still lost our collision data, right? We never imported that. So, again, it's very easy. We can just do something like uh, grid. That set cell. Almost the exactly same thing. So we're just going to copy this in. Copy the first two in, rather. Now it's asking solid boolean. So we want to say, remember our stone was zero. So we want to say if that evaluates to zero, then it will be true. And it will be considered as collision. So in our player, just for kicks, we want to trace out collision. And we, we wrote that code uh, last time. Go ahead and get me out of colliding here. Our output. Let's pin that down so we can see what's going on. Bring our flash back up. As you can see, no collision right now. Oh, but as soon as we hit that, we got collision. We've got collision. So there's one final thing we have to do with our level is we aren't handling our player. So again, um, we're actually going to promote this XML data to a public public var uh, level data. And that's going to be XML. And So now that we have our level data, we can just put that in here. All right, back in our game world. Uh, where are we? All right, here we go. So um, we'll go ahead and remember our level. So we'll create a new variable. Use the same code. Just load that in. Run it just to make sure that we didn't break anything. And we did. Ah, yes. We have to carry our variable name through. So now, since there's only one uh, objects, player start. So we can copy pretty much most of this. We'll just go ahead and copy all of it. In our game world, before we add our player, then we'll say we don't want our tiles tile. We want objects player start. Instead of adding in tiles and grids and whatnot, we'll go ahead and add our player. So this can be data element dot x data element dot y. And again, it's always good practice to cast those into ints. Let's see what happens here. Undefined property. Because level data is not a thing. So remember we had level dot level data. And now you can see we started here. That's where we had it last time. So thanks again. This is Zachary Lewis with The Game Studio. You can check us out at www.thegamestudio.net. Thank you very much and happy flash punking.